Amen, church. Amen. Protocol being established, I want to thank the shepherd of this house, Pastor Black, his family, my fellow pulpiteers in Christ, and I am just so very honored to bring forth the third saying of Jesus Christ found in John 19 saying, woman, behold your son, and to the disciple, behold your mother. For just a few moments today, I will be preaching upon the topic of standing in obedience. Let us pray. God, I thank you for your spirit that is in this place. I thank you, God, for your spirit that was at the cross. I ask, oh God, that I may decrease, and that same spirit may increase in me, O oh Lord. Have your way. Get the honor, get the glory that is due. In Jesus' name, amen. The word behold is commonly used throughout the Bible. It is often used to highlight important moments, declarations, or prophecies. It invites readers to pay close attention to the significance of what is being revealed. Genesis 1:31 says, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Isaiah 7, 14, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. John 1, 29 says, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold, the Lamb of God. This informs us that this third saying is no ordinary exchange, but one that should summon your attention. And when I think of Jesus, John, and his mother Mary in this third saying, obedience is what comes to mind. The very first thing that we can learn from his mother and this disciple is that God honors obedience. Jesus, in this moment, is surrounded by many people while nailed on the cross. The significance of this moment is that out of all the people who could have been mentioned at Jesus' last earthly coordination before dying was that of his mother, the mother who gave birth to him in the projects of Bethlehem the one who had rumors of the paternity, the one who risked her relationship with Joseph as she stood in obedience. Although the world wrestled with her calling, she never, never wrestled with God. And this mother, surrounded by statistics and constant worry of her son, never stopped showing up. And this final moment is giving her respect that she deserved as she stood amongst the crowd, saying woman was an honor. I'm sure it perhaps caught her off guard because women are rarely acknowledged during such patriarchal times. And he yells woman as a deep reverence for the role she played in his life and in his ministry. Uh, if you stay steadfast, God will honor you. You may live your entire life with no thank yous, no congratulations or pats on the back, but as long as you stand before Jesus and he acknowledges your obedience, that is all that matters. I know the world wants to stand on earthly business, but today she stood with God. You can keep your followers, you can keep your money, you can keep the fame, but give me my obedience, give me my integrity, give me 
be my loyalty and my Jesus no matter how hard it gets like Mary and the disciple in the darkest hour she said I will stand and if God honors me he does that whatever God do I am going to be obedient to that and so God honors her obedience the second thing as she stood is that God showed her that standing in obedience gives you community. If you were a witness at the cross, you had to overcome a fear like none other. If they were willing to crucify our Lord, you can only imagine what they could do to those who stood in witness of his power. Jesus had other siblings. He had a brother and a sister. By entrusting Mary to the care of this disciple, Jesus extends and solidifies the bond of family that goes beyond biological ties. Are you with me tonight? In the ancient Jewish culture, caring for one's parents was considered a sacred obligation. So to whom he left his mother with was a serious serious matter. In this act, Jesus establishes a new family relationship based on spiritual kinship and mutual love. Uh, today, we acknowledge this love as the body of Christ. Uh, on the cross, Jesus demonstrated that when you heed to the faithfulness of your assignment, God will send you who you need. Mary's son wasn't there, her daughter wasn't there comforting her but her son in Christ this disciple was there stop looking around bitter and broken because of who is not showing up as you stand at the cross Jesus is there he ain't talking about who didn't show up he didn't talk about who wasn't there wiping away his tears and if he can orchestrate her her well-being while he is nailed to the cross I know that God can orchestrate some things for you when you stand in obedience to Christ I bind up cancel culture tonight I bind up the spirit of offense and isolation Jesus demonstrated that we need one another our prayers are stronger together our presence is stronger together because when two or more are gathered in his name he shall always be in the midst why do you think the enemy is trying to dismantle the church dismantle our leaders it's because he knows that we are a force to be reckoned with. So where God goes, she went. Where God said show up, she showed up. Don't worry about who is going to be there, who thinks that you are crazy, who thinks that you are too bold. You just have to know that when God says get into position and stand at your cross, you better stand in position because God told her that just like I will send that disciple, I will send you that donor. I will send you that friend. I will send you that sister. I will send you that prayer partner, that community. Just continue to focus on your obedience. And Jesus will provide every need, not the world, not the onlookers, but the right person in the body of Christ. That's why we can't afford to not worship God together and praise God together and come into the house of the Lord. Amen, somebody. So my question to you is, are you willing to stand like Mary and this disciple? Stand when it gets weary. Stand when they mock you. Because as long as you are obedient, God will send who and what you need according to his timing. And so lastly, 
while crying out, woman, behold thy son, and here is your mother. This, this, the last thing that this text shows us is that obedience yields victory. The first mention of the term woman was in Genesis through the story of Eve. Although she was forever labeled as the one who was influenced by the serpent, the story of the woman may have started there, but it surely does not end there. In Genesis 3.15, there is a prophecy of the seed of a woman who will crush the head of the serpent. By addressing Mary as woman, he affirms this prophecy fulfilled because he is that prophecy of that seed and she is the one that will birth that thing that will crush the head of the serpent. It is because of the obedience of Mary that we have victory in Jesus. Because of her yes, we can say yes to her seed, which was her son. Because she remained steadfast and stood at the cross when no one else was there, she was knowing that scripture can finally be fulfilled. And when he called her woman, he acknowledged her not as his mother, but one with authority, one who would rewrite the history of women, restore the power of women, right the wrongs of the narrative and birth a seed that would change history. She was not just a mother, she was not just a widow, but a woman whose womb carried victory. Where are my seed carriers like Mary tonight? Where are the people that were birthed to crush the head of the serpent to break those barriers and to annihilate evil. She didn't know where her feet will land but she stood in victory with Jesus. She couldn't bear seeing her baby on that cross but y'all she stood. Stand there afraid if you have to. Crawl if you have to. But whatever you do, don't you dare like evil make you afraid because when you show up just like Mary and this disciple there is a blessing awaiting you with your presence you will never be alone community awakes you protection victory a mother a son a blessing is your portion but you must walk in victory victory already has had her name on it the moment that she birthed the victorious. Victory already had her name on it when she was connected to this great Messiah, the great I am. Mary, did you know that your obedience would do this? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby would save our sons and daughters? That the blind would see the death will hear the lame will leap. Mary did you know did you know did she know but she knew our God his sovereignty his power his covering his keeping his protection and moments before he took his last breath she knew just how much he cared you may not know every detail. You may not know every answer. But as long as you stand in obedience, God will be lifted up. Stand when there is nothing left to do. Through the storm, stand. Through the rain, stand. Through the hurt, stand. And through the pain, stand. After you have done all that you you can do stand in obedience amen amen and amen